right, folks, here we are. Uh, man, it took me, I spent about an hour blowing this thing out, vacuumed it, blew, blew it out, and then I sprayed uh, two sprayable quarts. It is now 59 degrees. So we got the tail panel and epoxy. Of course, it needs body work, lots of it. Trunk gutter, kind of hard to kind of hard to get to with this rotisserie I, I really i can't wait till this thing gets off the rotisserie um floors the front floor i guess you could say it's done dash really happy with the dash did some of the top rack what i can reach got the firewall i oh, also got the door jam i got the firewall So tomorrow I still have a whole, I still have a whole gallon. You can see where we shave the speaker. Uh, still have a whole gallon of epoxy, gray. So that's the plan tomorrow. We're gonna flip this thing on the side and go to town. I have some help tomorrow. But uh, the tub came out, sandblasted, came out pretty good, nice and solid. Um, like I say, there's just some peppering here and there on the trunk floor. And a couple on the rear floor here. Overall, not too bad. Um, so yeah, tomorrow we'll flip this thing on the side, go to town on the hole underneath. Probably end up spraying another, another three quarts or so. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. And, uh, so a lot of guys might wonder why I didn't get the whole thing sandblasted. Uh, mainly because this guy that does this for us, for me, for us, um, he doesn't specialize in anything. He doesn't specialize in automotive or anything. He's just a straight up sandblaster. And I'm not sure that he uh, is competent, I guess. I mean, I don't want to diss the dude, but I don't know if he specializes in sheet metal. So the last thing I wanted him to do was to warp my doors and quarter panels. So... Uh, we're going to be stripping those with the conditioning discs and 80 grit and whatever means it takes. Should go really quick since this is original paint. I mean, when he blasted the tail panel, uh, it literally took five seconds. And it was bare metal. Just It was like pressure washing. That paint came off so easy. And it was tempting for me to ask him to go ahead and do the whole car. But I, he, did a, he did a trunk for me about five years ago and he warped the trunk. So... Last thing I want is for him to warp anything on this car. So I opted to just have him do the structural areas, the firewall, cowl, dash, floors, top and bottom, tub, and all that. Because it's really hard to warp that. And then uh, and the, the body I'm going to strip mechanically myself. So that's that's coming up next. So tomorrow we're going to go ahead and shoot this uh, floor pan on the side. And then throughout the week, well, we'll probably take doors off tomorrow. And then throughout the week work on these quarters and get everything bare metal and an epoxy and then build up from there. So that being said, bring you guys back in the morning when we roll it on the side. All right, guys, here we are. It's next morning, Saturday morning. Uh, it's about 65 degrees outside. I had my little space heater in here overnight and it kept it at a toasty 75, 67% humidity kind of high it's supposed to rain all day um, so what we're gonna do is basically flip this thing on the side and go to town we're gonna probably mix up about at least two sprayable quarts probably more like three I do have some left over so we might end up mixing maybe two more I don't know we'll see it's a pretty big floor pan so this epoxy you don't want to let it get below 50 degrees so that's why I kept the heater in here just to just for a safe measure. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Mix this one to one, got gray. Kind of wish I had black so I can actually see because it's kind of tricky with the with the bare metal being gray and then and then the epoxy. It's kind of hard to see if you have, you know, if you missed a spot. But uh, we got we have a couple pairs of eyes on this thing. I think we'll get it, we'll flip it on the side, we'll get it in epoxy, and then probably flip it back upright, get these doors off, and, and 
go from there, see how far we get along today. So that's today's project, bring you guys back once we get it on its side. Up the epoxy here. Uh, so we're trying to use up whatever whatever old we have. That's gonna dry a little faster. Uh, so it mixes one to one. I found I find the easiest way to uh, to mix this stuff if you're mixing one to one is by ounces. I mean it's pretty simple math. So this cup is a quart, so so 16 ounces of primer, 16 ounces of activator makes 32. If you go a little above 16, then go a little bit above 32. It's not that crucial at this stage. I mean, you really can't, you don't want to overthink it because after all, it is a, it is a floor pan of the car. You know what I mean? It's not the, the hood or the, or the trunk or, or the actual body of the car. It's the floor pan of the car. Uh, once we flip it back over on its, where it's upright, nobody's ever going to see the floor pan of the car again. All we're looking for right now is basically uh, corrosion protection. As you can see, it already started flash rusting overnight. And this is, uh, let's see, he blasted it at like noon yesterday. It's noon today. So that's 24 hours of 75% humidity flash rust. Uh, so I like to let this stuff mix. We mix it and then we let it sit for like 30 minutes they call it inducing it and then and then we spray it. so I have some left over from, from yesterday I have about 22 ounces so we're gonna spray that first because that's been inducing overnight and by then we'll be 30 minutes in and we can we can pour up what, what I just mixed here uh, so this this epoxy I mean I talk about it all on the channel all the time I like it because it's sandable. It has a seven day open window, so so we can we can spray it today. And if I had the Raptor, we can Raptor it like tomorrow or within 48 hours or so. And you don't have to sand nothing. You don't even got to touch it. And that it, that bond, that chemical bond is not ever gonna let loose. So that's why I like it. It's affordable. The gallon kit is about used to be like 200 it might be like 240 now went up a little bit so did everything else so uh yeah so there is some pinholes that popped up with the sandblast process but i'm not sure that honestly i don't know that it justifies replacing uh because I mean, the dude was literally standing in the trunk. I've stood in this trunk before, and it doesn't give. So, so the front section here was all new. This is new. Uh, some braces are original. This this brace going across the front is original. Uh, these are original braces. This I bought. Somebody makes them, and then this is original brace. This is convertible only. This brace and this brace. Convertible only braces, uh, or it might be that brace that's convertible only. One of these. No, it's this because on the frame, this is where this is where the carbon mounts are. Uh, we did some work on the rockers here and there, but like I said, got some pickles here. I mean, could we cut that out and replace it? Yeah, we could. We, I, I don't think we do that. Then we get in epoxy, might dab a little bit of all metal or maybe some fiberglass filler over it and then re-epoxy it. And I'll be dead and gone by the time that ever comes back. So you also got to ask yourself, what's the difference between having this hole right here and this hole right here? 
I mean, it's multiple, it's a hole in the floor pan. So what's the difference? You can't push this in with your finger. You can hit that with a hammer and it ain't gonna break. Like, so, so people tripping, you know, off of, oh, you know, this, or, you know, this. Like, what's the difference? You got a, you got a one inch hole here and you have a little pinhole here. What's the difference? Don't overthink it. You know what I mean? Like I say, it's the bottom of the floor. <laughs> you know, nobody's ever gonna see it. Um, now, if it was on the top of the fender or something, then yes, absolutely, that needs to be cut out. You can't, you can't fiberglass something like that on top of the fender, on top of the hood, because it probably will shrink back, you know? So, so that would be a no-go on any outside panel. Floor pan, I think we can get away with it. So we'll go around the other side here, see what we got. I really don't like the way this top rack is sitting, but we're not gonna be messing with it. So, I mean, the tub is solid. That's all original. Wheel wells are solid. Uh, dash is good. So this stuff is dry to the touch, it's been dry. Actually, it's, it's like ready, right now would be the prime, prime time for, for filler or fiberglass, you wanna put it over the weld because it's still within the recoat window. So you put fiberglass on that, and, and that bond ain't coming loose. So we don't have to do the firewall. So all we're focusing on is from basically from this rear seat riser back, down in here, up in here, wheel wells, trunk inside the quarters, uh, where, where he sandblasted uh, up here. You can see he blew through a little bit. There's some pinholes on the quarter. We're gonna weld those up. For sure, that goes back to what I just said 10 minutes ago on the outside of the panel, that's a no-go. So that'll be welded up. Just, I, I mean, it, they weren't there, you know, until he blasted them. And that guy used some pretty high pressure, so. If, uh, and he was actually in the trunk sandblasting, so I'm not worried about the trunk. Yeah, we just wanna show you the, the, the ins and outs of uh, stuff that goes on that maybe a lot of people don't show, you know? Whatever. Backyard hacking. But yeah, I guess we're about ready to spray, man. We got two, almost almost three quarts. I think that'll get us through, man. I don't know. I remember on the, on the 64, I sprayed two, two quarts and I got like two coats on the floor, man. We got plenty. We got plenty. We still gonna have to take the quarters down and the doors and all that. So we still have about half a gallon here or more. But we don't got a roof. Oh yeah, we don't have a roof. Save material on that. Although I don't know what's more expensive, body work on a roof or buying a convertible top. It's definitely less labor. So like I say, it mixes one to one. I always want to wear long sleeve, long pants, because basically, well, oh yeah, what I wanted to say is, this stuff is, it's called epoxy primer. It's basically glue. I mean, when you go to the hardware store and you buy two-part epoxy to glue something together, it's basically the same thing in a liquid form. So it's sprayable glue. So what we're doing with the bare metal, we got it blasted yesterday. We didn't wash it. We didn't spray anything on it. We didn't put any OSFO. We, we didn't even touch it. We hadn't done anything. We blew it off with compressed air and we're going straight to the sprayable glue. Sprayable glue is gonna stick to this since it's porous because it was blasted. It's gonna stick to it and it's gonna form a, a, a waterproof bond, basically. Not water resistant, but waterproof. Waterproof, oil proof, brake fluid proof. This stuff is bulletproof. Um, so basically that's what we're here for. We're here for corrosion resistant. Um, you definitely don't wanna spray like a 2K primer on this because that's porous. And over time, the moisture is gonna get through it it's going to last rusted bad or, you know, worse than it is. But like I say, it's still going to last a very long time. But with this SPI epoxy, it is, uh, it's truly bulletproof. So, enough yakking. We'll set you guys up on tripod and we'll get to spraying.
right, so here we are about an hour later, hour and a half. We should end up spraying three sprayable quarts and we got everything in two coats. So the full floor, front to back, inside and out, and the trunk included was three sprayable quarts. So, looks a lot better than it did. Or at least it's protected from the corrosion now. We did the tail panel yesterday. Surprisingly, around the trunk latch, it's really solid. And GM spared no expense on the seam sealer. That's usually an area to go out on these 5960s. They also spared no expense on seam sealer up in there. So next up, I think I'm gonna leave this thing on the side and uh, address all these little pinholes, figure something out, either either put some all metal or, or cut them out, try and weld them up, see if they grow. I don't know. That's for the next video. And then we're gonna take the exterior down, the quarters and the doors, which should come off really easy. I mean, when the guy was standing from here and he stayed over here and his hose kind of blasted a little bit right here, it took the took the paint right off instantly so so I don't think it's gonna be much trouble getting this down to bare metal and then we'll get that in epoxy I want to get the whole thing in epoxy and then go from there so firewall once again that's why I like the SPI's because it dries to a sheen like that so you can see exactly what you need like this is gonna need filler that's the seam you know some filler there has its own guide coat built in. So, what you think about the SPI epoxy? How hard is it to spray? Like spray paint. Just like spray paint. Super easy. There's nothing complicated about it. One to one. We spray about 25 psi, full fluid full fan for the most part. When doing the wheel wells, I combed it in uh, to be able to get all the way up in there without it coming right back at you. So combed it in real small, real narrow. But yeah, super easy, man. Super easy. Transmission tunnel's already notched. This thing already fits on the frame. We already tested that, so moving right along. Bring you guys back. Let's get some more work.